Hello everyone. Let's start a new chapter of physical chemistry, atomic structure. As is evident from the title, what we are going to do in this chapter is we're going to inquire into the internal detail of the structure of an atom of an element. It's a very interesting and very conceptual chapter. Also from your exam point of view, it has very high weightage in your exam. If I have to give you a list of three chapters, three most important chapters of your syllabus, this chapter definitely is going to make to the list. It has a blend of both physics and chemistry. Mm -hmm. While studying this chapter, you will apply various, various concepts that you have already studied in physics or you will be simultaneously studying in physics. So basically, mm -hmm. you will enjoy from the perspective of chemistry and also from the perspective of physics. In fact, this chapter appears in the physics syllabus uh, in the form of modern physics. When you study modern physics, basically you study about the structure of the atom and different properties of the atom owing to its specific structure. So, this chapter broadly, I can divide into two parts. The first part will be up till before Schrodinger wave model. Now, Schrodinger wave model is a model that you will study subsequently in the chapter which you will come to know later on and the second half starts from Schrodinger wave model. This first half is fairly easy to understand and the second half is also easy to understand but a little new concepts will be arriving here which you may not have seen up till before studying this chapter in class 11th. This half, the first half comes under classical mechanics. Classical mechanics is that part of physics in which Newton's law is applicable. That means F is equal to MA is applicable. Now in this, the second half of the chapter is called quantum physics. Quantum physics actually is a different class and as such Newton's law is not directly applied in the form that we apply in classical mechanics. Although it can be applied in a different twisted form but not directly as f is equal to ma. So the first part of the chapter is going to be fairly simple and you will find that you are familiar with most of the things that will study in the first half and in the second half is actually what will be new that you will study in this chapter. So we'll start very humbly with things that you would be already very very familiar with. Now as I have told you already what we are going to study is the structure of an atom. Now it was previously thought, Greeks knew it right from 15th century, that atom is the indivisible part of an element and atom is utilized in forming molecules and the whole building structure of an element. So they knew that there is an indivisible part of an element. For example, if you have a chunk of iron, then this iron is made up of some indivisible, infinite number of particle and that particle they named as atom. They thought that atom is the indivisible part of an element and from your prior knowledge of class 10th, you know that that is not the case. The case is you have a nucleus positively charged at the center and you have electrons revolving around the nucleus. This you already know, but we'll see this in a greater detail. But this you already know. What you already know is atom is not the indivisible part of an element. Atom is constituted of protons, of neutrons and electrons. So the indivisible part that you must be knowing up till now are electrons, protons and neutrons and not an atom. But it was not known in the 15th century. In 15th century, Greeks knew that elements are made up of some indivisible part and they named it as atom. But there was no theory as such to explain what is that indivisible part, what are the properties of that indivisible part and how does it react and so on. So what happened the first time that mankind gave a theory to explain the chemical properties and the structures of that fundamental building block of element was in 1803. In 1803 what happened was there was a scientist called John Dalton and he gave his theory Dalton's theory. 
Now, first, what I'll do is I'll give you the facts, what the theory says, and then we'll critically analyze the theory, okay? Okay, now let me read out these statements of Dalton's theory, and then we'll try and critically analyze this. Matter is made up of atom, and atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element. Atom of same element have identical property, including identical mass. Atom of different element have different property and mass. Compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. Atoms cannot be created nor destroyed. So in a chemical reaction, there's just rearrangement of atoms. Now let me give you a little bit of background of Sir John Dalton. Dalton, he was a brilliant metrologist. He had very keen interest in studying the climatic variation. In fact, he maintained the record of local weather variations of every day for 57 years. He had huge experience of working with gases. He did many, many experiments with gases and you would very observe very shortly that these all five points holds good in terms of gaseous chemical reactions. Now, let us see. Actually, it was unfortunate for him that all the five points given by him actually turn out to be wrong. Let's see why. Matter is made up of atom, that's true. An atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element, that's false. Atom is not the indivisible part the smallest indivisible particle of an element because, see, you know that atom is further made up of electrons, protons and neutrons. So electrons, protons and neutrons, as per your knowledge up till now, should be the smallest indivisible particle of an element and not an atom. So this statement is wrong. Now, he says that compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. We know now that actually what happens is compounds are truly formed when atoms of different elements combine together. So the atom which we know as of today is the same atom to which he was referring to. So that is the same atom. So atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element is wrong. Okay. Atom of same element have identical property including identical mass. No, there is an exception. Atoms of same element do have different masses. They, they are called, you know, what are they called? They are called isotopes. For example, you have H1, you have H2, you have H3. These are three isotopes of the same element. The element is hydrogen, but they have different masses. Similarly, C12 and C13, they have different masses. You must be knowing uranium-235, uranium-237. They are atoms of same element, but they have different masses. Similarly, third statement, atoms of different element have different property and mass. You see, atoms of different element can have same mass and they are called isobars. For example, you have argon 40, you have krypton 40, calcium 40, even sulfur has an isotope of atomic mass 40. So they are various atoms that have, they are called isobars, they have same atomic mass. So this statement is also wrong. Compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. Well, you see, compounds could be formed when elements combine in a different ratio. For example, you have manganese oxide MnO, but you also have MnO2. Similarly, you have SO2, SO3, right? You have oxygen, you have ozone. They are combining in different ratios, okay? So this may not be the case all the time. Statement number four also turns out to be wrong statement. Statement number five, atoms cannot be created or destroyed. Well, atoms can be created and destroyed. For example, you know, you must be aware that the solar radiation that comes to the earth, what's happening there in the sun is called nuclear fusion, where hydrogen atoms combine to give you helium atom. Here helium atom is created and hydrogen atom is destroyed. In any nuclear fusion or nuclear fission reaction, actually atoms are created and destroyed. So this statement also turns out to be wrong. All the five statements are wrong. But that doesn't mean that Dalton's theory is useless. Dalton's theory is useful. And in fact, it becomes the building block of the everything that's we're going to study from here until the last of the chapter. Because I'll tell you why. See, first statement is a very powerful statement and every the entire theory of atomic structure actually emanates very naturally from the first statement. The first statement says very vividly 
that matter is made up of atom an atom is the smallest individual particle of an indivisible particle of an element now the focus here is that there exists a smallest indivisible particle of an element that was thought to be as an atom later as we'll study very shortly that jj thompson proved that atom is not the smallest indivisible particle it is actually electron and later with the discovery of proton and neutron we came to know that atom is not the smallest indivisible particle it's actually electron proton and neutron so but the focus is there exists a smallest indivisible particle previously it was thought to be atom later it was proved to be something else and even after that we know now no if you don't know i'm telling you electrons protons neutrons protons and neutrons are actually not the smallest indivisible particle actually protons and neutrons are made up of fermions and bosons and fermions consist of quarks and leptons yeah. so actually the whole story starts from here there exists a smallest in indivisible particle whether it is an atom or proton or neutron or fermions or bosons or quarks or leptons everything is emanating from here it becomes the building block he said that there is an indivisible particle j thomson said there is electron similarly james cadwick discovered neutrons and protons was discovered and fifth in in the modern scientific theory we have a concept of fermions and bosons but they all are said to be the smallest indivisible particle the fundamental particle so this theory is 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 the bottom line of everything it's it becomes the basement over which the entire story of chemistry of atomic structure will be built up so it's a very important statement and it's a very important theory similarly atoms of the same element have identical property including identical mass that's true for most of the cases only isotopes are the exception so there's a exception to the statement but statement is not rubbish in itself statement carries weight and this was given in 1803 it was too early to identify these isotopes because isotopes are the re very recent discovery in science it was discovered only after the discovery of mass spectroscopy so it is very recent and this is this doesn't nullify the importance of the statement it is only an exception to the statement similarly isobars are only the exception to the statement similarly statement number 4 is true for most of the cases and it is not true for the most of the cases but it's also true for the common gaseous reactions which dalton observed and which we even see today for gaseous reactions this statements hold for most of the cases and statement 5 is true for all the chemical reactions atoms are created and destroyed only for nuclear reactions they are not created or destroyed for chemical reactions so this statement is also true for the entire reactions which was known to humankind at that time so it was given in 1803 it was long way back and these five statements still holds good only exceptions occur to these these statements except for statement number 1 which is in entirely wrong in a sense that atom is not the indivisible part but nevertheless there is some indivisible particle of an element existing which is not an atom it is something else so this statement uh, this theory as such is proved to be entirely wrong uh, but this theory is a important theory and the message that you have to take away from here is that for studying the structure of an atom you have to realize that there would exist a fundamental indivisible particle of an element and whatever we are going to study from here is in the will be in the quest to find out that particle what is that particle if not if that is not an atom which was believed to be so in 1800s then what is that towards the end of this century in 1897 it would be known to the world by the experiments of jj thompson that there exist even more fundamental particle than atom so the theory will be modified and it will be built up so jj thompson will be extending the idea the basic essence of dalton's theory